we'll watch the tape of of the Ravens game. Yeah, don't remind me of that. We'll watch the tape and then get like routes on air, or whatever, and then be done. We'll be done like twelve thirty one. I have a question. I'm what, so okay, whoa, whoa. So I, I can't let this skate by. Like, what happened? Like, I didn't watch the game, and I thought you guys, quite frankly, you guys have been looking outstanding. Like, I, really, you guys have been. Like, watching y'all on tape, you guys have been looking really good. Don't, don't what? tell him. Don't the tell him that. Look at his head. Look at his head. Don't tell him that. What's up, guys? It's the St. Brown Brothers. We're back with another episode. I know you guys missed us. Um, it's going to be a great one. Can't wait. Um, I know last time we said minus three Ravens, Lions. More like minus 30. What the fuck happened? You know, it was a, um, it was a tough game. Uh, to say the least. Mm-hmm. They played better than us on both sides of the ball, offense and defensively. Um, what about such teams? Is that too or no? We, I think we had a pretty solid okay. special teams, but okay. uh, I think you know we just we didn't execute on offense. Uh, I didn't I didn't play well um, defensively. You know I don't I'm not in their meetings. I don't really know what's going on, on defense, but we couldn't really you know get a stop. We went three and out, I think three times in a row. I don't think we had we had like nine plays before mm-hmm. like the the last drive we had before the half. So it just was unfortunate. You know that's kind of a game where you kind of want to. Just forget about and move on. Obviously, you know we're gonna watch the tape, but watch the tape and then forget about it. And move on. We got we got the Raiders up next on Monday night. So yeah, what was the locker room like after that? Um, just was it motivational? Off. Or was it like yeah, pissed, Press, pissed off. Depressed, yeah. depression. No, we're hungry, so we're not. Because that was like a college like score. Like that was not. That's not normal in the NFL to get blown out like that. You know. Right. Um. I was you guys, you guys don't get blown out usually, huh? No, usually close games, one score games, close games. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, shoot, games. I feel like every team every year has one of those games. That's true. I'm glad. That's true. I'm glad we got. Yeah, you I'm glad we got out of okay. the way now. <laughs> okay, okay. Whereas you know, last year we kind of we were making a playoff push, and it happened to us later in the year, and that wasn't good. So mm. glad we got out of the way early. Um, yeah, and rewinding back to you asking me like, who are the top teams in the NFL? I'm like, you guys are almost there. This is what I mean, like a top team in the NFL that wouldn't happen to you. Know what I'm saying? Like that wouldn't happen to like you would lo- you could lose a game, but like in that fashion, I don't know. Wait, does it does it, it does matter how you lose? On the record, so, it just says yeah. In the record, yeah. Maybe okay. like ten weeks from now, people will will forget about that. But as of now, in the conversation of top teams, that's on your mind, you know. But after the game, I was on my phone on Twitter. I seen like different, like Barstool, different, all kind of different uh, social media platforms tweeting out the video of you going hard and then getting suplexed. Um, what happened there? Uh, you know, just was blocking hard. I you were. Was, I agree with that. You were I hard. was pissed off towards the end of the game. I was like, mm-hmm. I mean, we were throwing it like every play. I was like, bro, if you cause a run, I'm about to try to take someone's head off. Mm-hmm. Caught a run. I'm like, boom, boom. I'm, I break it down. I got to make sure. You know, and do DB try to juke you out. I'm like, let, let, him, let him not juke me out here. So I break down, break down, hit him one time, boom. Hit him pretty good, come again. And then right as I hit him, leave my head, he like just ducks. I'm like, what the fuck? He ducks, lifts me up. I'm like, shit. And now as I'm coming down, I was like, I could have grabbed his neck as I was coming down. But I, I didn't want to get fouled. I was like, bro, it's already, we're already losing. Like, it's already a bad look. Let me just take this L. Uh, got up and was, was looking at him, just staring at him. He was talking. I just didn't say a word. I just looked at him and then went back to the huddle. I mean, one thing I couldn't I would, really say shit. You know what I mean? One thing I would say is, like, they were definitely gassing it. Like, like how did that happen? Like, bro, like, if you're going full speed at someone and they just duck, like, that's so easy. You can do that to anybody. It's you know? so random. Like, I've yeah. never, I've never seen that happen either. That. Yeah, yeah, so no one does, yeah, that's so weird. But people were acting yeah. like, oh, like, get in the weight room. I was like, bro, like, what are you talking about? It has nothing to do with strength. Man, enough about our game. Let's yeah. get into your game. But before we do, I hope we got a special guest on we do. your end. We do. Who is it? Cole Komet, the Comet, uh, as Eva Fuss would call him. Um, Notre Dame guy, Notre Dame alum, great tight end. Um, my dog. So we got Cole Komet on the show. <clears throat> Shout out EQ <clears throat> for getting him on. You know, I didn't know, I had no idea he was going to be on until like a day ago. Uh, I was like, 
National Tight Ends Day. He, he asked me, he's like, can I get on it? I'm like, I'll get you on next week. Yeah, I, I was like, EQ, when am I getting invited on this podcast? Like, what is going on? I'm like, I'll get you next week. After next win. So I was like, okay, looks like I'm doing it like on Tuesday then. Yeah, <laughs> National Tight Ends Day just ended. I was like, shoot, let's do it. Um, but shoot, now let's, let's, let's go through your game. I know you guys got a big dub uh, last weekend against the, the Raiders. We actually got them on Monday night coming up. Um, how was that game? I know you had backup quarterback came in. I saw all the hype. Locker room speech, this, that, and the other, tatted yeah. up. Like, what, what's he like? What was the game like? Like, give us, give me an insight on your QB and, and everything. Yeah, well, well, Tyson's a dude. I think everyone loves Tyson. Um, he he's got a lot of self confidence in himself. Um, gets rid of the ball quick, and I think everyone saw that on Sunday. And kind of just did a good job of managing the game, taking care of the football. Um, and really, man, our, our run game really took over, I thought. Uh, we were able to just kind of beat them in the ground from the get-go, and uh, they really couldn't do anything about it. So we had a lot of long play drives that really took the will out of them early. And right. uh, then we saw the result there at the end. Jalen with a pick six, and uh, we were able to knee it out. So, um, yeah, they probably it seemed like they were a little jet lagged, not going to lie. <laughs> really? I, I'm serious. Like, the, the team we saw on tape the, was not the team that we played. I remember, I remember Cooley came on the sideline like, they're tired. They're tired. I was like, damn. Bro, they, they were gassed. Like, really? we would – you could tell, like, we would run the ball a couple times, and, like, if we got that first first down and then the next play, if we got, like, a good six-yard chunk play, like, on a run, like, they were they were done. Like, they were gassed, Deflated, yeah. So, it's probably deflated. Yeah. How, how's their defense? How's their defense? I know I haven't even looked at their, uh, their defense yet, but, like, what, what are they – I mean, I thought that, like, when we watched them on tape, I thought they were, like, pretty solid. Um, obviously, 98 Max is, a fr- I think, a freak. Um, yeah. I think he's pretty underrated in terms of, you know, when we talk about edge rushers in the league, um, he doesn't get enough credit, I don't think. He, what he does in the pass game is obviously outstanding. Right. He's super quick twitch and strong. But he plays the run game just as hard. And yeah. I think that's the most respectable thing about him. And he plays every snap. He doesn't come off the field. So, uh, he's a load to deal with, but I thought I thought we did a good job of handling uh, this past Sunday. That's, that's what's up. Um, let me ask both you guys. Did any of you guys know that his dad was a rest, an arm wrestler? I just found that out. Like, you talking about Tyson? Yes. Yes. I, I saw that Dude. video before the game. Yes, after the game. So he had he had some family. Uh, that, like fifty three people came to the game for him. Whoa. So they had like Damn. this thing at the Chicago Yacht Club rented out after the game, which is just like a mile north of Soldier. So I stopped by, and his dad was there, and they had a arm wrestling table, like a true pro arm wrestling table set up. And so, like, I sized up with him and fitted him up, and got, and got a photo. <laughs> Did you try? Did you try? He, when he grabs your arm, you're like, holy shit! Like this, this dude, this dude's strong. Like, dude, and, and you're and you're a big dude, like you got big hands, so like. I know, but he 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 would dominate. You could tell, like he's got like the technique and like. Yeah. Like, right when right you get on, it's just you feel this fucking grip. Like, yeah, like, he, he <laughs> fitted me up with his hand, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, this yeah. guy, this guy's on it. This guy knows what he's doing. Yeah, if you're 28-time world champion, that's pretty serious. You know you know what you're doing. That's pretty badass. 28-time? Yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah, that pretty is. badass. And he's really charismatic, too. Like, his uh, his interview, I was like, he seems like a, yeah. like a funny dude. Like, you do a lot of things in, in the broadcast. Yeah, like one no, it was funny. It was funny. It was cool, though. Uh Going over there after the game, I could like fifty three people showed up for his game. I couldn't believe it. Oh, I saw uh, they that. All flew in. They I, all flew in from West Virginia. Um, dude, that's a lot. Of, like, you know, they they were all hyped up, so that was pretty cool. That's a lot of tickets. Did they all go to the game? Yeah, that's a lot of tickets. That's, that's a, a lot, lot of tickets. money. That's a lot. I, of money. I calculate. I calculated. <laughs> I if, if Tyson paid. You would do that. Money, you would do that. That that's like that's like a ten thousand dollar <laughs> deal. Yeah. Well, ticket tickets are kind of cheap for your guys' game, so. Uh, they're not. Oh, chill out. <laughs> yeah. How much are you? How much yours go for? How much yours go for? Take a guess. Monday night. Not Monday night. Uh, on a regular. I'm asking no, right no, now. Casual, I'm asking you right me. now. I, take a guess. Monday night for our tickets right now against the Raiders. Three hundred. Monday. I don't know what what the hundred level. Uh, we get like, what's hundred level? Like the first, yeah. Like yeah. the like, first like yeah, row. Yeah, first row. Yeah. 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 Three hundred. Um. Nah, not three hundred. A little less. Really. Two thirty nine. That's not a lot. Okay. Tyson, about right, Tyson's though. probably paying like what one ten for each ticket. No, ours were one seventy. Well, yeah. One seventy. Yeah. One seventy. One seventy. Okay. Yours for a Monday night game, like prime time. That's pretty. That's cheap. Good. that's not cheap. But I feel like ours would be like three hundred dollars. Go look at Ticketmaster. Yeah. Probably yeah, tra- up charge crazy. I'm talking about for ours on my app. Yeah. I know on the on the team, right? Yeah, on the, by the yeah. team. Yeah, no, it's pricing. 
Honestly, no, nah, it's nosebleeds for Chargers uh, Sunday night. Sunday, oh, we, you guys got Sunday night I Chargers? Did. Yeah, so fun. Yeah. Well, you know what's crazy? We play. Electric. So you guys just play the Raiders. We play them this week, and then you guys yeah. play the Chargers this week, and we play them after our bye. That's crazy. Yeah. So I think, what would you I be watching we... Bears tape in the film? Yo, so, so you guys, uh, do you guys have off tomorrow too? How does that work? So we had off Monday and today, and then we got a little bonus day on Wednesday. So tomorrow we'll have like we'll watch the tape of of the Ravens game. Yeah, don't remind me of that. We'll watch the tape. And then get like routes on air, or whatever, and then be done. We'll be done like twelve thirty one. I have a question. I'm what? So okay, whoa, whoa. So I, I can't let this skate by. Like, what happened? Like, I didn't watch the game, and I thought you guys, quite frankly, you guys been looking outstanding. Like, I, really, you guys have been. Like, watching y'all on tape, you guys been looking really good. Don't like, don't what? tell him. Don't so tell him that. Look at his head. Look at his head. Don't tell nah. him. That. I mean, no, I'm just, I'm curious. Before, like, before you got on, I already we already talked about what happened. So I'm just gonna make it short and sweet. You know, we didn't <laughs> okay. we didn't execute on both sides of the ball. Um, and when your <laughs> offense and defense isn't going, it's hard to win games in this, in this league. That's um, true. No, that is true. You know, sometimes That's your true. offense is playing well, defense isn't, you can score, score for score. Or if your defense is playing well in this, you know, low-scoring game, it wasn't going both ways for us. I mean, they scored on, like, every drive. We couldn't score on any drive. We had three, three and outs to start the game. And then finally our first drive to get it um, was, like, four minutes left before the half. Um, and we had, like, four, we went for on fourth and 15. I cut, like, a – Dagger over the middle. We had a holding call. Took us back. Punted it. I mean, we wanted to have 20. Damn, 20 those penalties years. will kill you. Yeah. Oh, we had a lot of those too, actually. Penalties will kill you. Wait, Alan. And I seen uh, after your game, uh, your coach would be like, see you Wednesday. He didn't do that to son? What do you mean? <laughs> we, our coach still, says, our coach says still, see you Wednesday. We're still seeing Wednesday. Wednesday. I just told you. We had Monday. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is right. He, he, he is Wednesday. Wednesday. So because of the night night game. Because of the night night game. But it was a like, Sunday you know what I just realized? Like, we're so used to winning now. Like when we lose, like the whole world is bur- like it, it's damn, damn. it's so like the feeling. Damn, is you're talking like that already. But it was like different last year, like, huh? last year was different. Like huh? I know, I know you guys is feeling like my rookie year. Like you lose a lot. Like it's like you almost become numb to losing. It's like oh, it's another game. Hey, <sighs> hey, we've won, we've won two of our last three. I know yeah. you guys. You guys are playing well. I'm happy for you guys. Yeah. Two of our last three. But who you guys played though? Who do you guys play? Um, it doesn't matter. It's in the NFL, man. Do yeah. Whatever last year. <laughs> yeah, like, it doesn't matter who you play. Wait, did you guys lose? You guys just lost to the Vikings the week before, right? Yeah, they just beat the Niners, so. Yeah. No, yeah they I just know. beat the Niners. They're not bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, no, nah, I, I mean, like I said, I know what it's like, um, but I think, you know, better days are ahead for you guys. You guys are getting better. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. I'm happy to see you guys win. I don't I don't want to see my brother lose. We're, every week. We're, 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 look, we're, we're looking to peak when we play you guys. That's, right. that's the whole point. You guys got you some time. You want to peak at the end of the season when you're hitting playoffs. You don't want to, you don't oh, I, oh, I know. Trust me. You don't want to peak early. But you also don't, don't want to start, You don't want to put yourself in a fucking slump early either. You don't. Obviously, you don't. No. Obviously, you don't. But you don't want to blow your load, you know? What, what was that What was that like for you guys, though, last year? Like, you guys started off oh, one and really six. Slow, right? One and six. So, like, what was the feeling in the building like where it – do you know because like yeah. you guys obviously had some resolve to you where right. you guys finished out super strong. So, like, how did that all go down? Yeah, so we – um we – First game last year was against the Eagles. They barely beat us. Um, we lost that second game at home against Commanders. We win. Now we're feeling good, one and one. Then we lost like what five games straight. Went to New England, got shut out. Boom. Uh, kept losing, kept losing. Close games, lost. We're like fuck. Now we're one and six. This was like actually right at this time because the trade deadline was coming up. Um, we traded TJ to the Vikings, and mm-hmm. then ever since we. Traded him. TJ's my dog. Don't get it twisted. But ever since we tra- traded him, we started winning games. Like we, so I think we had. Oh, when we played you guys at Chicago, <laughs> that was the first one yeah, in Chicago. And we we should have won that game. We, we should have. Like, yeah, that was our first. That game. Um, our first dub, like away game that we won. That Coach Campbell's won. That I've won since I've been on the Lions was in Chicago. I was like, damn. Jeff Okuda had the pick six. I'm like, yeah. yo, we beat you guys by one point. I was like, this is it. All right, we feel good. Now we're two and six. Then we went to – I forgot who we played next. Oh, I think it was the Packers. Aaron Rodgers threw, like, two picks at home. Um, Hutch had a pick. Kirby had a pick. Or three picks. We beat him. Now we're three and six. And then we – I remember getting three in a row. I think we beat New York Giants. They were pretty good, too. And then once we got three in a row, I remember it was like, bro, that's three in a row. At You know, we're starting to win now. And then, bro, once you start winning, I feel like you just start racking them up. You don't even look back. Yeah. But before we looked back, we were, like, six and six, seven and six. And I think we lost one. We eight and eight. Then we were – Kind of kept going, lost, and then we ended up nine and eight. But 
but it happens quick. Like once you start winning a few, like you guys, the Vikings, like yeah. this shit might turn around quick in our whole division. Like everyone's starting to win. I'm like, God damn, we better lock in. Yeah. Well, that, that's how that's how the NFL is. And I think people start to write off teams so quickly. Right. Like, you just don't know what can happen. Like, like late, every week, year. the media is like, like this team's good, this team's good. Yeah. Like, bro, yeah. just let it play out. Like, it's Let so it play out. Different. And, like, you have you have no idea who's going to be healthy at, in what weeks. And, right. like, all it takes is a couple weeks of, like, your team getting healthy again. And you get rolling and some things starting to click. And then all right. of a sudden it turns around. So, like, you know, it, it is weird. It's such a week-to-week league, though. And everyone's so reactive towards what happens. Right, the previous game or previous week. So you guys on Dubs get Mondays off every time, or just like sometimes? No, this was <laughs> this was my first victory Monday I've ever had. Ever. Yeah, ever. In, in Green Bay when we'd win, it was like almost every time it was like see you Wednesday. Yeah, no, like it's just see you Wednesday, like yeah, and we like we like three years we went like twelve and three, so it was like we won a lot of games, so it was like. We'd win, see you Wednesday. Wait, they say come in for like a lift. You have to come in. Yeah, you have to like, come in, right? That's what I'm saying. You still have to come in you, Monday to get a lift, right? I don't think they said us. For us, I don't think. Did you have to come in at all? No, no. No one had to come in. I, I went in. Yeah, but, but, but you didn't have to. Going. But you didn't have to, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you had to. But in Green Bay, you have to come in from like 9 to 12 to get like a flush workout in. But other than that, like, yeah. Yeah, see you Wednesday. NFL players like me and myself, we like to rely on Dr. Teal's Pure Epsom Salt. I don't know if you guys have ever taken it, um, but it's awesome for post game recovery. After a long week um, of practicing games, um, a player like me personally, I like to use Dr. Teal's Pure Epsom Salt to recover, um, just to speed up the process because uh, it's a quick turnaround week by week, game by game. So, uh, and the body's your temple, which is the most important part. You know, if you're healthy, you can play. If you're not, you can't, obviously. So, uh, soaking Dr. Teal's Epsom Salt is a secret weapon to my recovery. I don't like to tell a lot of people about it, but I'm telling you guys, so make sure you buy it. Um, it recharges your muscles and helps speed recovery so you can feel your best at all times. And it's not just football players and whatever you're doing in life. Um, if your muscles are feeling sore, achy, um, use this and you'll feel much better the next day. I promise. Did you guys play together at Notre Dame? We did for one year. We did. How long? We did. Dude, think about our team. We were talking about this I day. Know, our bro, team so at Notre Dame. We, we had me, EQ, Chase, uh, Miles Boykin. Mm-hmm. Q. Enough, Nelson. Nelson. Mike McGlinchey. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, was, Durham, uh, was Durham there? Durham was there. Uh, Sam Mustafer was there. Yeah. Ian Book, uh, right? Quarterback? Ian Book was there. Yeah. Tommy he, Kramer but he was wasn't there. Start, he was starting, though. Was Julian Love there? Ro- yeah. Yeah, Love. Robert, Julian Ro- Love, Robert Hainsey. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Tillery. Jerry Tillery, yeah. Dude, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Drew Tranquil. Drew Tranquil, yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, we had quite the squad. We had quite yeah. the squad. It was insane. And you guys, we were like you. Yeah. We we did well. We didn't. We lost just, to Georgia by one point. Two. Yeah. Yeah. We we definitely underachieved probably for the talent we had, but I mean we had a fine ten and two season. Any Brock Ry- any Brock Rice stories you got, Cole? That's my dog. Oh man, Brock Rice stories. Has Brock gone on this podcast yet? No, nah, not yet. <laughs> He hasn't gotten the invite, so <laughs> that's good for me. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of Brock Wright stories I got. He's pretty low key. Yeah. Um, not anything with the Lions that he's done that that's he just uh, he's just like a does right. everything right type guy. I guess that's also Notre, yeah. Notre Dame in him. Also, we had Junior exactly. Cora. Junior Cora, he's on your team. But he was young, yeah, probably. He was probably young. No, right? but no, but he's still he's still playing. Um, who else? Yeah, you guys have Notre Dame guys on your team. Who do you guys have on your team? You guys have a few. We have J.O. Romeo, his brother, but he's older. I think he left. I don't know if he was um, Scott there. Scott he, he was probably gone, a long snapper. Yeah, Scott. I didn't know Scott. No. And then we have one more, I think. Brock. You just talked about him. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, both Cora brothers. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You got to have one of the most amount of guys in the league. We had Jalen Elliott. We had Javon McKinley. Um but they're not here no more. Like when you, I mean, when you play games, there's no like USC guys on other teams on. Like you just like, oh, uh, like you don't know any college do players. We just played Nelson Aguilar. He's on the Ravens. So, and that's, and that's, that's one guy. guy. That's one guy. Williams, Adoree Jackson on the Giants. Like, what do you mean? What do you want to say? <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, like, like, they, 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 after our games, we have like five guys. We take a picture. Yeah. Who was on the Raiders? Who was on the Raiders? Who was on the Raiders from the Jerry Tillery, Isaac Rochelle, Troy Pride. Am I missing one? Michael Mayer. Yeah. How's he doing? How's Michael Mayer doing? 
I think he's doing well. I don't know. I don't. I never knew him. So I was never there with him. No, yeah. he's doing well. Uh, the two games ago, he put up like seventy something yards. He, he's doing well. He's uh, he, he's finding his way. He's a good player, man. He's gonna be a good player. Um, what happened to USC? Um, I'm on. They they lost. Their yeah. Game. Oh, okay. Well, they were probably so beat up from us. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and, they, and they, they choke, they they choke against up. ranked teams. You guys choke against ranked teams. It's a fucking classic USC shit. Who'd you guys play? Oh, a little bye week. You guys had a bye week? Yeah. Yeah, uh, bye week. Yeah, we're taking our rest. Just yeah. t- tough week for us, man. I don't want to get into the details. Okay. Actually. Just watched it. It was, uh, it was tough to watch, man. Oh, you watched it? So do you think uh, you think Caleb Williams now sits out the rest of the year? Nah, Is nah, that what they do he's, over he's there? A, he's a fighter. <laughs> he's, okay. He's going to duke it out for sure. All right, all right, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, 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 at this point, you can do what he wants. When you're the best college football player in the nation, you can do what you want, but he's going to play That's it true. out for his, for his boys. Okay, all right. What do you, think, gonna, what do you, what do you guys think about Sam Hartman? I heard he gets a lot of, like, love on TikTok. I don't, I'm not a big TikToker, but I heard the girls are obsessed with him. Like, what's up? I know, Cole, you're, I know you've got, he's got, got some main ball, so. <laughs> he's got the locks, man, so. Uh, <laughs> no, I was, dude, I, I got to know Sam because uh, I went back to – I went back to school this past off season. They finished my degree out, and uh, I was throwing with Sam a good amount, you know, during the week and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I'm really impressed by him. I didn't realize he was so old. <laughs> he's like, I think he's like 20. He's almost 25. Yeah, I think. He's, so he's like a Bayless. Uh, like I think it's Mike. I think he's Mike Tazer. It might be a year above something crazy. Yeah, but I mean, dude, I think he's a baller and he's a good player. Oh, he can so. run too. I didn't know he was that fast. Yeah, yeah. So like, hopefully he gets an opportunity at the next level as well, but. You know, I, I know all the guys over there love him, and he's been doing a good job. So, oh, yeah, we'll shoot. see where it goes. Let's get these rapid fire questions. Come on, I'll go first. All right, yeah, you ready? Right. For, we got some not rapid fire, but we got some questions yeah, that we yeah, ask yeah. most of our guests. Um, okay, cool. so it's kind of standard. So, what's the first Super Bowl that you remember? So, whether you know, as you, as a kid, uh, the first Patri- one you watched. Yeah, well, the one that I have the most vivid memory of is the Patriots Giants with the catch uh, oh, uh, the head, yeah. on top of the helmet. I remember, yeah, that, I remember that like was crazy. That I remember like that whole day because I was like kind of rooting for the Patriots at that time, and I was kind of a fair weather for them. <laughs> uh, Where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Oh, you're from Chicago. I had no, yeah, I had no reason. I just love Tom Brady. I just mm-hmm. I thought Tom Brady was sweet. So uh, <laughs> yeah, but I remember that day and the lead up to the game. And then watching, I mean, it was that was an unbelievable Super Bowl, right? Unbelievable, yeah, it was. It was crazy. Were yeah. you were you a Bears fan growing up? I was. No, I was a Bears fan for sure. My dad played uh, for them for a little bit towards the end of his career, and I've grown up in the area, so I've always been a Bears fan. Um, I wouldn't say I was ever like a huge, a huge like diehard Bears fan where I'm yeah. living and dying by everything they do, but right. definitely root for the team, like. He like loved the Super Bowl team that yeah. in 06 that went all that stuff, but yes, yeah, no, amazing. definitely a Bears fan. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's your favorite non-home stadium to play in? Do you have Minnesota me by too. far. Me too, dude. I love Minnesota. I love I Minnesota. The architecture of the stadium, I think the vibes in it. I love their uh, entry, like the Viking entry and yeah. the horn. Do you like the, the snow skull. that comes? Yeah. The skull. Yeah. The, the, yeah, I think it's awesome. I love playing there. I and, love I, and I think because my first ever Sunday night game, or one of my first few, I had like a good game there. I was like, I like the stadium. What, yeah. do, you think about yeah, the turf? what do you think about the turf? It's fine for me. I think it's actually the best turf I've played on. I don't like it. It's, it's slippery. Really? It's like slippery kind of. You hurt your ankle on that one, huh? Yeah, but that's not why. That it's just like yeah. it's not the best turf. Like, oh, I'm cramping. Oh, shit. oh, oh, shit. Oh, well, is that a cramp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not even working out. Hey, they, they don't hydrate over there in Chicago. Oh, what's up, cool? Shit. <laughs> Whoa, boy, need some uh, what's it called? Some uh, some smart right stuff. Some right stuff. You guys have that? Yeah, I take it. Yeah, we get the right stuff. Right some drip drop. Some, some drip, drip drop. drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Liquid IV drip drop. Yeah, yeah. Um, who's your favorite musical artist? Mumford and Sons. I listen to a lot of Mumford and Sons. We're gonna have to play some. We're gonna have to run some of their music. I've never heard a song. I know you guys. Oh. I know you guys don't listen to that. What, what is that? Wait, wait, wait. How do you spell that? Mumford and Sons. M U M F O R D, and then and Sons. Is that? It's uh, like an alt- It's like an alternative rock uh, band. Wow. I, I'm gonna have yeah. to. It's very. It's very, very, very white of me to like that. <laughs> very white of. What's your, yeah, here we what, go. what's your favorite type of music? Like, 
I'd say like that type of music, like alternative rock, like Mumford and Sons, um, The Lumineers. I kind of like listening to that stuff. Um, pre-game though, I'll listen to like house music. I'm about to say, what do you listen to pre-game? Yeah. Yeah, like I listen to like I and I couldn't tell you an art a house artist. Damn, yeah. you know, you know what? You would have you would have loved that C cool. But I like I like listening. Notre Dame was the same thing. Notre Dame was the same thing. You would have loved, bro. Don't compare Notre Dame to SC. When it comes Notre to Dame was fun, bro. You, you there's no frat at Notre Dame, is there? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just look like you're a dorm, bro, You look like a you're frat dorm. boy. Like you're just the <laughs> perfect frat boy. Mumford and Sons. I'm not. With the hat <laughs> on, like you would have loved SC house music. Get out of here. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Whenever you're in a slump or you're not feeling like yourself, it's always good to get some therapy um, or talk to somebody. Um, BetterHelp can be that avenue for you. Um, so if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's a great, um, great company. Um, it's entirely online, so you don't have to go anywhere. It's convenient and confidential, flexible, so it can be suited around your schedule. Therapy is beneficial because it helps you give, get an understanding of why you're thinking the way you're thinking and doing things you do. So it helps you really understand yourself better. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Um, I know you guys have busy schedules, so like I said, completely up to you, um, super flexible. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash brownbrothers today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash brownbrothers. Um, cool. What's the hardest you've ever been hit? If you remember. Yeah. Um, this is going to go back to peewee football. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. Dude, first, so I was like a little bigger for my, uh. So you played up? Yeah. So I played up with older kids. So like when I was in, I think my fifth grade or sixth grade was my first year of tackle and I was playing with eighth graders, which is mm. like a pretty big jump. Yeah. And so I remember prior to going to like the training camp for peewee football, my dad like put me through the ringer in terms of workouts and like yeah. all this shit. So like we were, I was in shape, ready to go, but I'd never really been hit before. Like truly hit, hit. Mm. And we were doing a, like a, almost like a bowl in the ring deal. We're like, you're in the middle. I can't, like, oh. can't believe this was even allowed. Yeah. They were sent right the but yeah, you're in the middle chopping your feet and then they <laughs> shout out somebody's name and then they come running at you and you have to hit them. <laughs> but you don't know, like, <laughs> so you're like chopping your feet and you like, in your head, you're like thinking, okay, who's around me? And then like, you're you're like, okay, I need to make sure I know like where where, the, where he is and he is because these are the two hardest hitters. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm like chopping my legs and in a circle spinning around and they shout out this kid's name. <laughs> And I like lose track to where he is, and I turn around, boom, and I just get absolutely destroyed. Like I get sat down, like fall to my knees, and I'm like, "Holy cow, that was the hardest I've ever been hit." So that 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 was in fifth grade was the hardest I'd ever been hit in a drill that you should never ever do. Right. Yeah. In football, ever. <laughs> but that's what we were doing when when I was younger. So. so like in the league or in college, you never got smack tattooed, like. Um. I don't. I can't. I mean, you're pretty, oh, I got. You're pretty no, big. I so it's get, probably, you probably don't get hit. As yeah. Hard. Well, I did get hit. I've gotten hit by um, uh, Harrison Smith a couple times that we've played him, where he's come in for a tackle and like he'll get you right in the right spot on the ribs, yeah. and mm. you you get the wind knocked out of you for sure. So right. I've had a couple by him that I can think of, but um, nothing like that one in Pee Wee football where I got absolutely annihilated. Yeah. That's crazy. I gotta ask your your touchdown celebration. That it's been that, oh, it, it's been your it's been that for how long? So I did it. Um, I've done it since my second touchdown in the league. Uh, my first one like caught me by surprise. Didn't think <laughs> I was getting the ball. Nick Foles just throws it up and I catch it. I I don't even know what I did for a celebration, but it was it was terrible. And then Jimmy Graham was like, "Dude, you need to get like a celebration going. Like you can't just not do anything when you score a touchdown." So we had choreographed, like, because of my baseball background, I played baseball in Notre Dame, that I would do, like, a baseball swing. So, like, Jimmy would come in and throw the pitch, and then I would hit it. Uh -huh. So it was actually against Detroit was the first time in my, my rookie year that we were able to do it. And uh, it 
we did it and it, it worked out great. And so I just kept it. So it's just been that one since. And I think it's, I think, I think guys like it and buy into it. Yeah. I think it gets a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great one. Cause they, everyone knows it's coming too. Everyone yeah. Knows. I think it's just, I'm just like, like, they're they're like, Oh shit. Like a home. Yeah, everyone's like doing it. Like, I think it's fun. So, uh, I think, I think the fans like it. I think the guys on the team like it. So, wait, um, yeah. Um, have you seen the video of like, or you know, like every team has like the guys that like throw things in the stands, like t-shirts and shit. Like, yeah. Like when he scores, they get ready, they throw a pitch, and then he hits it, yeah. and then they jump up and like catch it. You seen that video? Uh-uh, yeah. Did you see that? Have you seen that? No, I don't know. I, it's I, funny. I'm gonna have to look it up. It's funny. They, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on, but it was uh, the seam route I caught against uh, Denver. Yeah. And uh, I go like get ready to do it, and one of like. The, the dudes that are hyping up the crowd like throws the pitch. Oh, wait, I right think I, 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 I saw that. It was at, at home, yeah. right? In Chicago? Yeah. 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 And then one that. guy tries to rob the home run. Like, it was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. That's, that's, pretty that's cool. Yeah. You, you hit it on us, fuck, when we played you guys last. You had like the Justin rolled out. You had like the a, a corner. The corner post? Right. That shit works. We have that same play. We had the corner yeah. post. Oh, that's, a great, that's a great Sam play. Scored on it. Sam scored on it a couple weeks ago, right? Who did? Same oh, Laporta, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, that play yeah. is cheating. Like, if you run some rollouts, yeah. yeah. then bend so it back run, across. Like, right, we run so many, like you guys do too, like the movements yeah. and like the outside zone. Like, yeah, on a, with the tight end, like you got a guy to get out. And get that. You know, when you're right. you know when you're in the uh, in meetings during the week and you're getting the plays installed, you're looking at like, oh, that's a touchdown, like. Yeah, you're like he, he he's, he's getting out. a touchdown this week. Like, there's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> you want those? You want those touchdown plays? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, what's the movie you've seen most? Ooh, or your favorite movie, movie I've seen the most. Or like your favorite movie? Probably Interstellar. Okay. That's I love one. Interstellar. That's one, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, that's that's, one. that's probably my favorite movie. Wow, what do you guys... What, I'm, wait, not, I'm not a big movie guy, so don't ask I'm me. Wait, I'm gonna, have, okay. I'm gonna, have you seen it? No, I haven't. Don't watch, <laughs> ask me nothing about no movies. Bro, my little brother, bro, whenever he goes to the movies, like when we were younger, my dad used to take us to movie theaters. And like, no matter what it was, he would hit the fucking seat and just sleep. The whole movie. Fall asleep in the season. Yes. Oh, it's like every no, time. time. Every time. Damn. Like religiously. Like he can't watch movies. He's just like You know you know who's a big a big movie buff is uh, Brock Wright. Oh I just found that out actually after a, after a game in the plane. He was sitting next to me and I was pissed off. I had my headphones on and we landed. I woke up and him and one of my teammates, Khalif, they were talking about this movie and Brock and him were just going at it about movies the whole time. Like, damn, I didn't know yeah. Brock was such a movie guy. He loves movies, man. Yeah, he's seen everything. That's, yeah, everything. He's seen everything. Yeah, I just figured that out. Yeah, see, I won't watch like every genre. Like, I'm like more selective, but like, I watch a lot of movies still. So. Um, who was your favorite player growing up, Cole? Well, Tom Brady was one. Um, and then I think when Gronk came in the league, that he became, uh, he kind of became my new guy. I can see that. Brady Gronk. Yeah, uh, I can see that. Yeah, so that was kind of like his style of play at tight ends, like the style I try and emulate the most you know i think there's so many different guys mm-hmm. and so many different types of play style at the tight end position but uh, he was kind of the guy i always gravitated towards and you know always respected obviously he was a great receiving threat but um his ability to affect the game in the run game as well i think was was super cool and, and pretty unique for for a guy like that to do those type of things so he was a guy i always loved watching you've obviously probably met him right you remember the first time meeting him like well- yeah, well, I met him at uh, at the tight end U deal um, this past off season. So oh, we need a, we need a receiver U deal. Like, I don't get, yeah, tight end, get I feel like tight end gets so much love. Like, I do. Like, tight yeah. is like the the most lovable position in football. I feel like, yeah, there's I don't no know like hatred towards no tight end ever. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no <laughs> tight end that no one likes. Like, it's just like they're tight ends. Like, what's up? Like, yeah. Hey, well, you guys gotta get it going and get the receiver thing going. Oh, there's so you many know, receivers though. Like, you know what tight end is? I was telling, I was talking during the game to somebody. I'm like, all fullbacks have the same personality. Do you have no set? Every fullback in the NFL has the same personality. You guys have a fullback on your team? Yeah. Yeah, Kari. Kari, KB. Kari blasting you. Every team I've been on. The only, I don't oh, think I had, I had a fullback. Was that the Kari. dude that was active uh, against the commanders and had to run because all you guys running backs got hurt? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all, all uh, fullbacks have the same personality. And I feel like tight ends and fullbacks have similar personalities. Like, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's the same. Tight ends good. are just chillers, huh? Like, yeah, there's like yeah, chill. chillers. Yeah, there's we're chillers. Do you ever wonder how many current subscriptions you're currently paying for and have no idea? Rocket Money helps you uh, figure that out and help you cancel subscriptions. I know for me personally, sometimes it's tedious to have to go through all the avenues, all the links to cancel to cancel a subscription um, that you don't want to pay for. So Rocket Money is an easy way to cancel that for you, and you know it puts extra money in your pocket because 
those extra subscriptions can stack up after a month. Uh, and then next thing you know, you're a year of paying things that you don't even use anymore. So uh, use Rocket Money to cancel subscriptions you don't use anymore. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. With Rocket Money, you can easily cancel the ones you don't want with just the press of a button. No more long holes or annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money does all that work for you. With over 5 million users and counting, Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $720 a year and $1 billion in total savings so far. Stop wasting your money on things you don't use, cancel your unwanted subscriptions, and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash brownbros. That's rocketmoney.com slash brownbros. I feel like tight end might be one of the hardest positions, too, in football. You have to know the run game, yeah. and you got to know all the routes, bro. Like, yeah, mentally, say- mentally, it's probably, besides quarterback, and maybe yeah, I'd say it's second. Like, yeah, I'd say it's second. I still think I think it's second to quarterback mentally, um, just because yeah. just because we add in the pass concepts. That's yeah, exactly. Saying, bro. To do all the yeah. IDs, but like, I can tell you the IDs too on a lot of the wrong plays. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know. but like the pass, you have to know the pass concepts, protections, all those type of things, and then. But I do think, physically speaking, I think. Well, I, I think the hardest positions. I think it's quarterback one. I think the second, I'm always impressed with corners. Like the fact that you can, you're or at least you're trying to cover a guy running full speed ahead that knows where he's going and you have, and you're running backwards and have to cover a guy. I think that's pretty impressive. And then I would, I would say tight end is three. Bro, you know, I always argue with my teammates. DN is one of the easiest positions. Edge rusher is one of the easiest positions in football. Bro. Yeah, if you're if you if you get got one sack a game, you, you're getting twenty yeah. million a year. One sack a game, yeah. that's it. If you got Make enough athleticism, <laughs> yeah, you play thirty snaps a game, and you get you can get a sack a game. And you're you're I mean, even a sack every up. other game, you have eight sacks. Like, you, yeah, you're, you're getting good. paid. Yeah, like, yeah, you're getting paid. You're getting paid, Bro, and you don't oh you don't you don't have to play every snap. You don't have to play every snap. You're, you're born don't. to be a DN. Like you're just naturally gifted. Play DN and go get paid. Like, yeah, that's it. It's crazy. It's crazy. So would you um, say, right. Oh, who's up? You're up, Mimi? No, you're up. I was going to say, would you say we, that We already Gronk, talked about this. Your yeah. best QB tight end duo, obviously, Tom Brady and, and Rob, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess you can now, recently with Travis Ooh. and uh, Mahomes, they look nice. They are on a different level. I mean, you look at, like, I think they're just, like, making out, making they, up routes well, they are. out there. You know he made up the route yeah. against, when he scored against us, he made that shit up. You know that? Yeah, and like he had a quick route and he ran a fucking a basic. Yeah, I was watching their film the other day. Like I think he was supposed to run a high cross and he just sat in the middle of the field and then just picked up like thirty it's yards. Cheating, like it's yeah. crazy, man. Like so they're on a they're on a different level in terms of you know knowing where he, where each other is at, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, I have to say Mahomes, Kelsey, and uh, Brady Gronk are the two that are up there for me. I'm surprised more teams aren't like adapting that or like certain quarterbacks are like older of course like not with a rookie or obviously but like just kind of get open sometimes like that's so easy yeah i mean i think they make it look easier than it is I know. at times like to have that like timing and to have that like trust with one another that you're gonna you know be in the right, right void at the right time like, but both of you guys know this probably like sometimes you run a route and you know if you did some other shit you'll be naked like don't you ever like feel that like if i did this yeah and, like, like sometimes they're she's yeah, so wide open, so like it doesn't. He doesn't have to be time. The time doesn't have to be on point. You can just just give it to him. Like, bro, some, yeah, I feel like some quarterbacks they're not. They, they I know. They can't of do course, that. of course, not every quarterback. right. No, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah some guys are so like into the progression and timing, yeah. like you can't screw up their their timing and all that stuff. Yeah. it definitely takes some synchronization between the two. But also, like, some of it uh, is in their offense too. BP Byron Pringle was telling me last year is like. Bro, if I have a like a what do you call it, a dagger or like a basic mm-hmm. outside and like and someone's in there, I just curl it up and just sit in the curl zone. I'm like, bro, that makes so much sense. Why would I run to get cover? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That makes so much exactly. sense. Um. Okay, what's your favorite football movie of all time? Of all time? I don't really watch football movies. I wouldn't even know. Do you, um, do you watch those? No, I, I've bro, seen. Remember some, the Titans? Like that's a big one. I, I haven't seen that one. I, I like Invincible with Mark Wahlberg. But I like that one. Uh, but not many. There's not too many great football movies in my. The Longest opinion. Yard is not like that one. It's more of like a comedy. I, I know, but it's just yeah. No, it's a good one. When I was yeah. younger, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that, these movie questions can can go. Um, what was your first concert? <laughs> bon Jovi. 
Okay, really? I know Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Son was, was that before or after you met his newest son? Did you know Jesse? No, that was before. That was oh, before. really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was my first concert. Me and my buddy, and then my parents went with us. And it was Kid Rock that opened, and then Bon Jovi. And then obviously, you know, I ended up meeting uh, Jesse and all that at Notre Dame. So yeah. it was kind of funny. But kind of crazy to be a son of a rock star. Don't you that, think? that is kind of crazy. That's insane. Wait, he went, to your, he, he went to school with you guys? Yeah, yeah, he went. He played on a team. Yeah, who doesn't go to Notre Dame? Like, what's his name? Bon. What's his son's name? Jesse Bon Jovi. Jesse. Was he good? He's a walk on. He's, he's a walk on. Yeah. Same as what's his face? Uh, Nico Fertitta. No, was, Nico. He play, no, scholarship. He with no, Nico was scholarship. Nico was scholarship. Yeah, yeah. Was scholarship? Oh, okay. Chris Fink yeah. was walk on that earned scholarship. Yeah. Chris Fink was cool. But Jesse, Jesse owns the company, or at least he did. I don't know if he still does. Uh, Han- the Hanson Water. Have you heard of that? Yeah, the Rosé. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Rosé. Like yeah. he, he owns. They own that company. Yeah, you got some stars okay. that go to that go to uh, Notre Dame, huh? Of course, absolutely. Yeah, you got some dogs. <laughs> some um, dogs. Who's the funniest dogs. teammate you ever had? Cole, who's the funniest teammate you ever had? <sighs> funniest teammate. Man, I'm trying to think of back at ND. Dexter was up there in Notre Dame. Okay. Dexter was Dexter was funny, man. Yeah, Dexter. Was Dexter. <laughs> there was that one time where he like walked out of the workout, and then they came to grab him, and they like had to hype him back up to get into the workout. And then he's like, "Yeah, I'm that dog. I'm that dog." And then he's like, "Back out of the workout," and it was hilarious. Like he quit the workout, went in, went in the locker room, and then came back and finished the workout. And he was like the loudest guy in the whole workout. It was the funniest thing. Bro, he was. Uh, we had the uh, Valentine's Day massacre shit. Do you remember those? Yeah, yeah, bro, those were awful. He quit that, bro. I think, and he was passed out on the on the uh, on the turf with like bees going in his mouth, like breathing in. It was the funniest shit I've ever seen. Dude, Do you guys have workouts like that at ST? Yeah, like you know what mat drills are. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, we had those. This is worse than that though. This is worse. But we had. What those. was yours? It was like just a. It was just like trying to kill you. Like every St. Patrick's Day and Valentine's Day, we had like a massacre where like you come in, you start in the weight room, do like hella squats, like leg press, lunges. I forget what else. Like all kinds of shit around the weight room, and then you move to the field. Now you do a laps. You freaking pushing sleds. I, don't, I forget what it was. It was crazy. It was it was nuts. It was like, insane, bro. You, you were dead after those. Workouts. Yeah, it was insane. You were dumb. You were dumb. But I think back to like college days. I miss. I know it sounds weird. I miss like dying and look at like looking at your teammates <laughs> during those times. Like fuck. The worst thing like, was those are the times I missed the locker room and like just the hard shit like that you hated. Like the worst thing was like if you have two groups and the first group is done, you see them dead and you're like fuck. I'm about to go in. Yeah, that yeah. That, that first group came out and you're like, oh no, this is gonna be bad. This or, is gonna. Be or bad. even now, like we'll work out offense, work out, we'll work out first. We'll come in locker and be like, we'll be sweating and shit. They'll be like, defense, look at us. Like, how was it? Was it hard? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, be like, we'll, we'll be like, yeah, that shit was hard. Good luck. They'll be like, fuck. <laughs> It's always funny walking in the locker room and seeing the defensive player just staring at you like, how much are you sweating? You're like, fuck. Yeah, oh, shit. They're, dr- they're dreading going in there to yeah. work out. So, was, would you say Dexter or would you say somebody else? I'm going to say Dexter was up there for sure. What about um, in the league? I, dude, Jimmy Graham's hysterical. To he, me, is, he, he is. Yeah, he is funny. As I funny. mean, hysterical. Like, he's so, uh, he's so blunt. It's hilarious. Like, we'd be in a meeting – here, I'll give you an example. Like, full team meeting. It'll be our situational meeting. I don't know if you guys do this, but, yeah. like, so it'll be, like, uh, end of the game, fourth quarter, uh, fourth down with four seconds left, and the offense has the ball. So it's, like, a, the foul ball situation where yeah. you launch the ball up in the air, let it hit in the end, or out of bounds, and the game's over. Like, you take four seconds off the clock, so you don't have to punt it, or you know what I mean? So, uh they go, all right, so what do we do in this situation? So like, like they want somebody to say, we're going to run foul, foul ball. Like, we're going to throw the ball at us. And they're like, uh, Jimmy, what, what, what are we going to do here? And he like he's, like, writing notes down, like, kind of not paying attention. And he, he goes, what was that, bud? Was that, coach? And he's like, what are we doing this? What are we going to do in this situation? He goes, man, throw that shit up to 80. And then he just keeps, keeps writing. <laughs> Was that but <laughs> it was unbelievable. Just died, like totally the wrong answer, but like didn't give a shit. And he, it he was did. the funniest thing ever. Yeah, he is funny That's as funny. fuck. Isn't like, he a pilot? Doesn't he? Doesn't he fly? Yeah, bro. Yes, bro. Yeah, dude. I went down there once uh, in the off season, and I 
kind of flew his Huey helicopter in Miami. It was sick. You were like actually flying it? Yeah, like he's like, okay, now you're in control. Like, and so I was steering this thing, like <laughs> around my. I was terrified. Yeah, I was just yeah. thinking, I was like, holy shit. Dude. That's scary. Yeah, yeah, fuck he's that. still, he's back in the league, right? He's with the Saints? Yeah. He's with the Saints right now, yeah. Bro, what yeah. years is for him? It's gotta be like 13 or 14. Yeah, he's not like Mercedes, Mercedes, though, huh? Mercedes is. Nah. Nah, he had to catch his. Mercedes is. Yeah. He's like 18. Mercedes is year 18 and can probably play three or four more years with the way he's looking right now. It's yeah. crazy. Damn. Crazy. Thank you to Pristine Auction for sponsoring today's video. If you don't know about pristineauction.com, they are the most trusted sports memorabilia and collectibles auction site. Auctions on pristineauction.com start at just $1, and each day there are over 1,000 autograph items available, so you win signed authentic signatures at affordable prices. Deals are happening all the time on pristineauction.com, and they have just about every player you can want, including Tom Brady, Mahomes. They got guys like J-Mo, Hutch, um, every shoot, every different sport, you name it, a um, bunch of Detroit legends. So make sure you guys check it out. Every item on pristineauction.com comes with a certificate of authenticity from the industry's most reputable authenticators. Upgrade your collection of signed memorabilia today and get $10 off your first item, one, when you use code SBB. Again, use registration code SBB on pristineauction.com. Links are in the description. Um, so you played baseball and football growing up. What was it like, you know, playing both sports? Did you know, did you want to go in the NFL, MLB? Did you know, or did you have no idea? Like, what was that like, you know? Yeah, I think from a young age, I always kind of lean more towards baseball. Mm -hmm. Um, I always kind of thought that would be, that was kind of what I gravitated more towards. Um, I was both a pitcher and a hitter. Um, but then like football recruiting kind of took over, like, you know, I got to a size where it was like, you know, yeah. six, four, six, five, and I'm running the way I'm running. Like, you know, the football kind of starts coming at you. And, uh, yeah, so I started getting recruited for football in my so after my sophomore year of high school. Um, and then when it kind of came down to making the decision for where to go, I was basically like talking to coach Kelly and I was just like, Hey, like, um, like I'll come, but like, I want to play baseball too. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. Like we'll make it work. So, um, kind of had still had the same thought process of not knowing which way I was going to go with it yet. And, um, got to my freshman year, uh, really was like having a hard time with football. Like when you get from high school to college, like that transition's crazy. And you're going to get against some dudes that probably should be in the league. Mm -hmm. And you're, you know, you haven't seen real football yet. And, so yeah, that that freshman year was a little tough. Started to figure it out towards the end there, and then um, from there, kind of just steadily started growing. And uh, I had a good freshman year of baseball too, so I didn't really know where it would head. And then um, really just after my junior year, like when you get the grades back from the NFL and you kind of see like where you stand, uh, it was hard for me to pass up the opportunity to go professional at that point. So football kind of just took over and. Uh, I definitely don't regret it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I've been having a great time with it. Yeah. Well, do you think uh, – I never played baseball. That's like one of the only sports that me and my brothers didn't play. We played basketball, soccer, football. How does it help? One of my teammates said uh, A.J. Brown played baseball. He's some of the best hand-eye coordination he's seen. Does it help? Like, How much does it help with deep balls, like tracking the ball? Like, yeah, I think it – yeah, I think it definitely helps the tracking. I mean, I was an outfielder, so, like, you had a, you know, trying to catch a small little white ball that's going, you know, however high in the air and being able to track it, um, you know, 250 feet right. past the plate. Like, so that, that stuff, I think, definitely helps. I think from the mental aspect, it helps, too. Uh, baseball kind of, you have to remain patient. You can't, you know, get too overwhelmed with yourself, like, you may make an error in the field and a ball might not come to you, you know, for a couple of games. So you have to stay like locked in in that regard. And whereas like football, it's still like, okay, you may drop a pass or you may miss a block, but you have the next play. Yeah. And like, you can, there's ways to like make it up right away. Whereas baseball, you can't do that. So it kind of teaches you, teaches you patience in that, that regard too. So I think that type of, from the mental side, that that's also helped me as well. Right. But yeah. But yeah, I'm asked to, I asked to her junior that because Torian junior played uh, baseball too. He's like, yeah, that shit helps. Cause like, they have like, yeah. you know, like you run and you try to keep your head steady when you're running full speed and shit. Yeah. Like, I'm like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
So, Cole, what was your first uh, impression of, of EQ when you first met him? First impression of EQ. Damn. So this would be going back to my freshman year. And you were a junior? Yeah. Oh. Wait, what? Damn, you, I don't know what the yeah, thing. I, thought, I think I just thought, like, I thought you, Chase, and Miles were just freaks. Like, bro, I thought Washington you were freaks, bro. Huh? I thought you were freaking. I'm like, look at this fucking tight end. Oh, that's damn. cute. No, yeah, I'm serious. Like, I'm serious. I'm my friend. No, I remember going to like a spring practice, and I'm like, look at these freaking receivers they got. Like, it's Chase. It was Chase at the time, and like, it's you. And it was miles. Like you got big dudes like that yeah. can run. Like it was pretty crazy to to see. So yeah, I guess that would be like more so as a player. Right. That was my first impression of you. Yeah. Did you have um coming out of high school? Did you have a bunch of offers? Like what was your recruiting like? Yeah, no, I did. Uh, I mean, once it picked up after my sophomore year of football in high school, um, like you get one, two, and then it just kind of starts rolling. And then I went to some camps in the summer and. Really, once I got offered by Ohio State and Notre Dame, which were, like, the two schools I really wanted the most, after that, like, you're just getting offer after offer. Right. Um, you know, and, and really for me, like, it was only down to those. Like, it was between Northwestern, and Ohio State, Notre Dame were, like, the three I was really looking at. Um, but, like, once those, those like, schools hit, like, then you just get a bunch of other ones. Like, the whole Big Ten, like, you're hearing from, uh -huh. the whole ACC. So it kind of just goes from there. Did you have any, did you take any official visits? Only to Notre Dame. Yeah, because oh, okay. I committed before my senior year. So who, who was your the only official visit I took to Notre, was to Notre Dame. Who was your host? Yeah. Uh, Durham. Durham. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was, gonna, I was gonna one of the best hosts. Like whenever I got a host, I mean, I hosted a recruit. That Why is that? Tell, tell, me, tell us about that. Why are you one of the best hosts? Can't say. Really? Can't say. It. Can't, say, it can't, say. can't say. Probably, it's probably illegal. Yeah. <laughs> just to say, like, coach illegal. are going to be like, we need him to commit. I'm like, I got you, coach. It's like that. You were like, you were that guy. Like, if you need someone to commit, if you need someone to kick. Yeah, they want to chase Claypool. I might like, got him. Javon McKinley. You know, he's like top receiver in California. Got him. Got him. Got him. Who those else? Two guys. I think it was the only two guys I, I did, they got me for. Like, they, they really want me to get those two receivers. And I'm like, and then, then yeah. Like we want them, like that. Don't worry about it. What did you like? Dang. What did you run them through? Like, why? Why did they have such a good time? I just showed them a good time, man. You know, like, you know, show, show them the ins and outs of yeah, South Bend. Yes, yeah, so show them the ins and outs. I mean, there's parties. not much to do in South Bend, so like, no, what are you guys doing? Brown to a couple parties, you know. Show them a good time, you know. Yeah, I, I know, I know what to do. Like, you have a good time. Okay, you, okay. You know. So you're, you're telling <laughs> me you know, how to, you know you know how to good you know how to have a good time. Is what you're telling me? I know how to show one too. So, wow. Uh, yeah. So tell me what your uh, draft day was like. What was your draft process like? I don't know for me. My yeah, draft, draft, draft process was wild because uh, it was right in COVID. Um, oh. So I was at home. You know, I knew I was going to go like late first, early second. Like it was somewhere in there. So mm -hmm. um, I was in my head just thinking second round because I didn't want to be like, yeah, get all hyped up for a first round deal. And like at that point, like, I have no control over what's going to happen. You know, all the stuff that I've taken care of in terms of my play is done. Like I can't impact any decision at that point. So I was just like, okay, in my head, I'm thinking second round. And if I happen to get picked in the first, like awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so like the first night goes by and obviously like there's a couple teams I thought that I might go to and it didn't end up happening. And so it was a little bummed out. And then, um, the next day hit, and I had no idea the Bears were interested because the Bears had, like, nine tight ends at the time. Really? So I was like, yeah, like, on roster. So I was like, okay, I'm not getting picked in Chicago. But Emily, my girlfriend, was like, I think you're going to go to Chicago. And I was like, it, that's – I was, like, trying to explain her, like, that's not really how it works. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, so then uh, Jacksonville was on the clock and on the TV, and then I get my phone call. And you thought and it was so, Jacksonville because the time. So I thought it was Jacksonville. So my brother, like, it goes Jacksonville's on the clock, and then my phone rings, like, literally right away. And my brother goes, "Oh shit!" Like he was pissed. <laughs> yeah. Your brother was like, "Yeah, he was like, okay, at least you won't have to pay state income tax." <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "All right, like, good price guy." And then I answered the phone, and it ended up being the Bears, and it was uh, everyone was just going crazy. Obviously, just being from here, and yeah. Um, That's it was it was super cool. It was a super cool moment, and 
you know, my family has been was super hyped about it. So it was a lot of fun. So you basically were kind of in like the Midwest your whole life with high school, college and and the pro. Yeah. I was just talking to one of my buddies. He's on the Rams. He went to I went to high school with him. Then he went to UCLA and now he's on the Rams. I'm like, bro, you never left California your whole life. So you basically I mean, you were in Indiana, but I'm asking yeah, you, do no, you wish you ever like, like do you wish you ever left the Midwest? You would I, I you know, I kinda was looking forward to that out of the draft. Like, oh, like we're you know, going somewhere different, you know what I mean? Um <laughs> bro, and bro. I thought, you know, there was a couple teams I thought that might have been interested, like out west and you know, down in Florida or te- like that. I think that would have been sweet to kind of just venture out and do something different. Um, but at the end of the day, like this was kind of what was in the works. And uh, I mean, I'm loving it. I love right. being at home. I love being in Chicago. I think it's a great city. And, you know, obviously we're working, working toward to get this thing turned around here. Right. But um, I couldn't be happier with where I'm at and where this thing's going. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely grateful for it. I, yeah. feel, I feel that. What were you saying to me? I heard you. you know. I was saying, uh, cool. I was like, when I was getting ready to get drafted out of uh, South Bend, I'm like, okay, bet. Like, I'm about to go to a big city. I'm like, it's going to be fun. Like, <laughs> bro, I, I didn't even know where Green Bay was in Wisconsin. That was the one team I didn't know where Green Bay was on the map. Like, if you show me a map and tell me where to pinpoint Green Bay, I would have no idea where we're at. I thought I could look it up on maps. Like, bro, I was like, oh, fuck. I mean, I was the, fu- I was like, the final question that we got for you, Cole. Um, I don't know if you're ready for this. What are your top five tight ends of all time? You don't. Oh wow! You don't have probably. You know, don't do anyone that's playing right now because you know, media. Yeah, you, you, you can do that. You can do that. You know, you know, you know. Travis, bro. you have to. Do you I think he's. Travis. I think Travis is goaded too. But go ahead. Okay, I have to put in Travis. Uh, I I don't know if I can go order here yet. Um, Travis Gronk, Shannon Sharp, Antonio Gates, Tony Gonzalez. Okay, that's a good okay. list. Yeah, I think that'd be my list. Uh, not in any order specifically, yeah. but I think that's I think that's the list. Yeah, is Gonzalez? Really think about does that. Gonzalez still hold the record for like most yards? Or no? Yeah, he's got like the most receptions and most yards. Okay. Yeah, who has the most touchdowns? Gates? I think it is it Gates. I think it's Gates. Mm. I think it is Gates. All right, so I appreciate you being on the show, Cole. I know you know we've had a lot of Bears players recently. You guys are doing good. Keep it up. I'm proud of you guys. Um, keep doing your thing, man. Uh, but like I said, appreciate you being on the show. EQ made it happen. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe where you get your podcast at the Third Third Team on YouTube. Um, we got more guests coming your way, so stay tuned. It might be a Lions player, might not, because at this rate, it might just be the whole Bears roster. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Peace. Appreciate you, man.